Right, so here we are, we're at uh, Bleetown. It's a very, very cold morning. The sun's just come up about 20 minutes ago, so it's getting light, but we've got nothing in the sky, as you can see, but we are gonna do some, um, some work today. What I wanna do is um, answer a question that uh, was mentioned at the club a few weeks ago when I had one of our Q&A sessions. There was a lot of conversation at that point about um, focus stacking, and particularly with, uh, with landscapes. So what we're gonna to do today is, is just have a look at how we photo, photo uh, sorry, focus stack, I'll say that right this time, focus stack um, a landscape. So what we've got here, I've got my camera set up, it's down here on, um, on its tripod, it gets a tripod, um, full frame camera, and today I'm using um, my Tamron um, wide angle lens, f2.8, 15 to 30, very good lens, love it a lot. But what we're gonna do this time is, um, we've got, got these rocks really, really close to the front of the camera here in the foreground, and then we've got this um, reflection in the mid-ground and then the, obviously the mountain and the trees in the background. So what we're going to do today is, is just bring that, bring that so it's all into really nice crisp focus. Now you could probably do that by, um, by pushing your aperture right, right up to, you know, as, as high as it'll go, F, F16, F32 even if you've got that. But when you do that, you, tend to, you do tend to lose a little bit of quality. So, what I'm going to do here is focus stack this image. We're going to take three pictures of, of this frame. So it needs to be nice and solid on its um, on its uh, tripod. And uh, this, these rocks just down here in the foreground, I'm going to focus um, on this, which is only, what, two feet from the front of the lens. Focus on that, um, F8, I'm going to take a photograph. And then I'm going to focus a bit further back um, on, on that reflection in the um, in the water, I should be able to pick that up quite nicely and take another picture with exactly the same settings. And then um, the tree there in the uh, in the background, um, I'm sure we'll be able to pick that out quite easily. So I'll take a picture of that as well. So that's going to be three pictures, and uh, I'm going to use live view because with live view, when you're doing this, I find that I can move the focus point around the screen a lot easier. With when you're using um, the viewfinder. I do feel, um, particularly on a Nikon anyway, I feel a little restricted about where I can focus in the middle of the screen. So we are just going to flick, it, flick the camera onto live view to do that. So here we go. We're into live view. My camera's already set up, so I'm not going to bore you with that, with that process. And, uh, and there we go. I've got, um, I'm just going to use the live view at the moment to focus on the, that, that tree right in the background. So that's the first picture. I'm going to come forward now. Focusing on just on that point where the tree is in, in the reflection, actually, because that, that just seems to be nicely in the mid-ground. I'll take that second picture, and then I'm going to come right down here now onto this, onto this rock that is literally just a couple of feet from, from the front of the camera. And there we go. That's our three pictures. What we're going to do now is going to jump into, um, into Photoshop. I'm going to uh, edit those and uh, we'll show you what that looks like. So here we are back in the warmth of the um, of the office and uh, yeah we've got our uh, three pictures uh, here on the screen which we are, are going to focus stack. So the first thing we need to do is, uh, is get these into Photoshop. Now what I've done already um, and I've not shown you how I've done this but I've, I've, I've processed these in Lightroom to a point that I'm comfortable with um, with the exposure so we'll, we, we will cover processing in Lightroom in, a, in another video um, so keep your eyes open for that but at this moment in time just assume that they're processed um, to a level they're not they're not perfect yet I've just given them a quick process to get them into the into the world where, where we're generally comfortable with them and what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, highlight the first image use my shift key and then click again to highlight my third image and that's all the all three and now I want to open these three images in Photoshop so we can focus stack them. To do that, we right click and we go down to edit in. And normally we would use this option here, edit in Photoshop. We don't want to do that. What we want to do is open as layers in Photoshop. And if we do this option instead of the top one, so we're going to the bottom, what that does is rather than open each image independently in Photoshop ready for, for us to edit, it opens them um, all in the same um, file uh, with each image on a separate layer. There we go. And we can see there we've got our three layers, each with a, a separate version of the same image. We turn those layers on and off quickly. So the first thing I need to do is, is highlight those, those, three, those three layers. And we're going to align those images so that they are um, 
as best a line as they possibly could. And they were they were taken on a tripod. The tripod didn't move between between um, between shots, but uh, you know things do move. And sometimes when you, particularly when you're using um, uh, the the the, 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 the the live view mode, sorry, the live view mode on the back of the camera, I forgot what I was saying for a moment there. When you're using the live view mode on the back of the camera and you're focusing in different places, the actual frame can change a little bit. So um, always a good idea to auto align images and just leave it on auto and click. So we do that by using an option here under edit. It's auto align, it just takes a moment to do that. Um, and it's also important to notice at this point that I've not cropped these images at all. These are exactly as they came out of the camera. And the reason for doing that is when the, this auto align process is run, um, it may resize some of the images a little bit. It might it might do a little bit jiggery pokery. So that looks to have pretty much finished. But what you'll notice is as I turn things up, turn layers off. You see this image here, um, this layer here has got a bit of space around it. So this enables us to um, just to to do a crop then, which which we're totally comfortable with. Um, now, first thing we should do is work out which one of these layers is uh, the layer that uh, has got the the, the detail in uh, foreground. So if I just have a quick zoom in and then zoom down. Look at this rock. That's a rock that's got plenty of detail in the foreground. Take that off. You see that's quite blurry. Take the bottom one off, and that's even blurrier still. So that the top one is the foreground. And the first thing I actually want to do is reverse that a little bit. So I want to pull that down to the bottom and pull the one a bit of it there. We can, we can actually see them six, eight, nine. Number seven was a bit of a, a disaster. I moved the uh, the camera as I pressed the button. So um, yeah, I deleted that one before we came in. So there are three images um, in, in Photoshop. What we're going to do now is go into the top layer and we're going to do what's called a layer mask. So the first thing to do is, is we want to keep the top layer because that's got all the detail in the background, but then we want to sort of bring through the detail of the layers below. So what we're going to do is we're going to go into a layer mask, and to do that, we click on the layer at the top, and we click this one here that some people say looks like a washing machine, um, some people say it looks like a camera, to me it looks like a square with a circle in it. Um, and that puts this white box to the left hand side, to the right hand side, sorry. Now what this white box allows us to do is, uh, is bring through elements of the other image. And it does that by using white and black. So let's, first of all, we need to get ourselves a brush. I'm gonna press B on the keyboard. That's the same on the Mac and on Windows. And that's given us the uh, the brush there. And we wanna click the nice, big, soft brush. Here we go, that's probably nice and big. Is it big enough? Yeah, I might just make that a touch bigger. Now, remember talking about red and black a moment ago. So white and black. So here's here's our black. We've got a black brush at the moment. What will happen is, as I start to paint in here across that that midground, you may start to see bits of it change. There we go. If I take off those bottom two layers, you should see nothing there. I've actually taken off a bit too much, to be honest. So I'm just going to put X and put the white back into there. Now. That's the area of, oh, I'll take that back out again, I'm sorry. All we do is, is white and black, white and black all the time. In simple terms, there's a bit of a rhyme that you can say, and it's white conceals, black reveals. So if you've got black in that layer mask, you're going to see what's in the layer below. So we've done that for the top layer. What we're going to do now is going to do that for the middle layer. Put the layer mask on. I've got black selected, so this time I'm going to just remove that and we'll see that, that I'm just doing it with a nice big brush. I'm going to get all that foreground nicely and you can see I've actually done a little bit of different processing to get the get the eye sort of coming into that area as well. Um, just around there and then that's my three layers. So if I just turn some of these layers off um, at the top, that's what I started with. You can see there's a little bit of softness in that area at the top and then as we bring that back um, I've got my three images merged together, but I've got the front nice and sharp and the back also nice and sharp. Now, I've not actually sharpened this image at all at this moment in time. It's the one part of processing that I don't do before I do this um, this uh, focus stacking for landscapes. Uh, what I'll do now is we can push that all back into, uh, all, all that back into um, Lightroom just by closing this image and saving it. And what that will do is it'll bob it back into Lightroom 
and, uh, and, and save it for us. In simple terms, that is how we process an image with focus stacking for a landscape. So I hope you enjoyed that video. A um, little bit of out and about and a little bit of back in the, uh, back in the computer. So, um, you know, hopefully quite informative for you. If you found that, that video interesting, um, please do like the um, like it down below in the uh, in, in the comments. Leave us a comment as well. Um, and also, please, if you want to keep up to date with what we're doing on our YouTube channel, hit that subscribe button and, um, and yeah, join us uh, in, in the future for our new videos coming up. Until then, um, that's it for this video. So thanks for watching and we'll see you later.